decision of yours to say that though because I've been to various clubs where they skirt around it and, and some shy away from it they don't want to pressure to it you've openly said you want to you want to win promotion well yeah we, we, uh, no you wouldn't come here if you did if you didn't have those ambitions anyway but uh, well, the club's an ambitious club it's it's had 10 fantastic years in terms of being in the Premier League and it's got used to it so it's just kind of new to it you know being the championship and we, we don't necessarily want to be here that long so um, so yeah there is pressure but we're quite we welcome that pressure because we feel that it's justifiable because of what we have in the room. I've got loads of questions here from everybody in the room and when we get to those I'm going to ask you to, to at least give us a wave so that these guys know where you are. If they don't like the question then come and find you afterwards. Um, <laughs> but I've got to ask about Ryan Shawcross first because um, he's, he's a hero to a lot of people in this room um, and he's had a horrific injury. How's he doing? Um, it's not quite as horrific as we first thought, so that's the good news. Um, but look, it's a blow. It's a blow for the squad because obviously he's, he's, he's the club captain. Um, but he's really bought into everything we've, we've tried to do, and uh, he's come back this this preseason with real hunger and, and and wanted to you know to achieve something. Um, it, people tell me he's fit as he's looked for a long time, which is the irony of, of, of the injury. Um, but look, he, he still has a big part to play. It's not just because he's not out on the pitch for. For a few months doesn't mean that his you know his his characters around the club uh, and he can still become a, a fantastic team member we I spoke to him about that on saturday night maybe that was selfish of me to do that but you know uh, he still has a big part to play and and yeah he's going to be a miss on the pitch but he, he has another another role now. can you give us a time scale i know it's very difficult with injuries like this but when would you hope he'd be back in a, in a stoke city shirt well i will be back tomorrow but that ain't gonna happen but, uh, <laughs> no look we uh, we won't put too much pressure on the medical department anyway uh, to get him back. But he had an operation on Sunday that went you know, as, as best it could be. It was the better bit of the injury in terms of those, there was, you know, we had worries early on. Uh, they were, were didn't come to fruition, which is praise the Lord. So it's it's a lower time scale in terms of him, him coming back. But we wouldn't want to put you know, any, any kind of... Uh, 
days or months or weeks or months. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing Ryan, he'll probably be, beat that schedule, whatever schedule he's set anyway. Um, listen, talk to me mainly about the man, the man next to you, because a little bird tells me you've called him privately the most miserable man you've ever met. I don't, think, large, I, 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 I don't think I need to call him private. Like <laughs> <laughs> anyone who's, who's met him will come into his uh, into contact with me. We can go with that, you know. But I think it's a good cop, a good cop, bad cop sort of role, so uh, he, he feels it well. I mean, look, you guys worked together at, at the Charm Academy. I think he, he took you to Charm, didn't he? Um, just what of an influence is he? With his experience of 15 clubs he's been at, for goodness sake, I've known him for donkey's years. Look at him, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't want to bring that up, did you? I won't mention how old you are, Paul, don't worry. But no, but seriously, from a, from a, from a young manager's perspective, taking over a big, a big, big job like this, where you've talked about the expectations, just what, how important is, is he for you? Well, he's been important since, I, since I've come into contact with him. You know, he's, uh, I, I went to Charlton because I was assistant manager at, at, at the time, and then I went to Charlton, sort of, in theory, took a backward step to, to try and develop, and uh, I did that under, under Paul. Um, taught me a lot about life, being a human being, not just football, and, um, and then taught me certain things, principles, characteristics that I've, I've, I've taken on board, and then um, guided me. And then obviously I, I, I left Charlton after a year to go to Brighton, but we kept in regular contact because the influence was, was big. I had opportunities to, to go into management far earlier than I did. Um, saw Paul's advice, he told me no, which turned out to be the right ones. And then obviously when I went to Luton, that was a big job in itself. Luton was a, a, a big club but for, for him. Someone who hasn't done management before, it was because, and I needed that that role model and that that mentor and, and someone that was saying really that, that that could guide me through that. And Paul's done that, and then obviously coming here, it's exactly the same. The challenges are the same, but on a bigger scale. Um, so you still need the same things around you. And I'm not naive enough to know to, to think, or stupid enough to think that I know it all. So let's go with someone with a bit more experience. Right reply, Paul. <laughs> What's he like behind the scenes? Um, pop your mic. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, well, come on. You've been doing this long enough no, now. You know how it was. Works. Come on. I was just in shock. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, when I first met him and he presented for the under twenty ones job at Charlton, uh, he created a huge impression. And since then, I haven't been really disappointed. We work on a basis of trust and. Uh, um, you know, the job I do is different uh, in many ways to the job I've done before, and, um, but it takes a, it's taken a bit of getting used to in many ways, but the fact that um, we can have honest conversations and, uh, um, and the fact that uh, Nathan listens and then makes his own decision is, is important to me, but um, we have uh, a strong relationship, and uh, and I'm enjoying watching him grow into a, an exceptionally good manager. You almost smiled. Sorry, I don't <laughs> didn't intend to. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get to your question, shall we? Um, this one's from Helen on table 25. All right, Helen, give us a wave. Oh, she's too shy. Oh, there she's right at the back in the corner, okay? That's where you need to go. Uh, this one's for both of you, I think. Um, what was the highlight for this squad during the, during the break? And I don't think they mean like, your holidays and your time off. I mean, when, since you got back together. Through the break? Okay. Yeah, in the, in the pre-season. Ah, uh, pre-season. Um, I think it's just to see the, 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 the squad sort of gel, the squad mould. We, um, what we wanted, we, we knew we had a nucleus of very, very good players here. The ones we, we wanted to take forward, um, very talented players, good characters and so on. And we wanted to add real good human beings to that. The ones that, that were hungry, ones that wanted to do well, ones that really wanted to play for the football club and are good enough to play for the football club. And then to see those come uh, and sign and then to see them gel through pre-season and to see them bond, um, they'd have a night out on when we was away. That was something to see as well. <laughs> Anybody so want to single out there that was leading? No, 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 no we don't. We're too loyal. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, so it, it, it's good to see them, 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 them gel into something that we believe they could do um, when we were recruiting. Paul? Yeah, I, I, I was really pleased that most of the signings were done uh, 
prior to the pre-season starting and uh, and what I've seen uh, I'm a big one on on humility and uh, and the, the willingness to take the blinkers off and open up to different things and if a, if a player can do that and, and the signs are that we've we've got a group that are still willing to learn and to improve you know that's right up my street I think it's perfect. Nathan, you've made some big calls in service football club in in this summer, um, in terms of the squad. Not just bringing seven players in, but some of the other decisions as well, which we're not going to focus on now. But there were big calls. Um, how important that the board totally supported you in those decisions, the backing they're giving you to sign the players you have, and but also the, the big decisions you make about people that perhaps don't fit into the squad, not being in in your group. Well, first and foremost, I, I think to be honest with you, the board and the, the owners here um, back every manager that they've had. I mean, that's one thing. If you talk to any manager that's been here, they always say we, we got back to them. And then, what we've done is we've asked them to do certain things. You know, we we like round pegs in round holes, so we've asked them. We've given them a logic in terms of the decisions why we've made them. We've, we've asked them to trust us with that. They have done that. And we're very thankful, and we. You know, uh, but we have very good owners, the ones that, that trust us to do that, um, and we won't let them down with, with that. No, we've, we've recruited certain people, we've made decisions, tough decisions, and they're logical decisions. So we've had a, 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 you know, a reason and a rationale behind it that we believe will make us a better squad, a better team, and a better club. No, that's not to say that anyone we've let go are bad players or anything, it's just we needed a specific certain, certain characteristics, and we believe we have them. How much, I was going to ask you, how much about it was character? I mean, the players that are in this room now, they're your players, and, and when you came in in January, I guess it was difficult to get that. You've had a, a pre-season now where you've had them. These are your players, this is your squad. How important is the character of those players, that, that, that these are the guys you want to? Well, I think they're our players, they're not my players. I mean, well, we brought them in, we brought them into Stoke City, and, and a lot of them were there here before I, before I got here. And good players, talented players, good characters, good athletes. And I think the environment's just better now. That's, as I said, I don't want to speak ill of anyone in the past. We've got a real good environment, a real good culture of what we want to do. They do believe, but they set their own environment. We give them parameters and we ask them what they want to achieve. They come back and say, we want to do this. We ask them, why do you think that's achievable? They give us those things. And then now we, all we do is try and guide them and put them into a system, put them into a training regime that, that hopefully will make them better. They buy into them. I'm sure that will, will show. You know how greedy supporters are, and I, I class myself as one of those as well, Seven new signings, but they'd like one or two more. Is there any more business to be done in this window before it closes on, on August the 8th? Well, well, we'll definitely have to do some more business before the window shuts. Um, how much just depends on when, what's available, what we think we need. But look, we've got a very good squad, the squad's in place, so unless we can we can add real quality to the squad, we, we don't need anything else. You know, we have good quality, we've got good athletes, we've got excellent professionals. We have a, a way of playing that we, we believe is going to be successful. So if we can add real quality to give us a, another little push, we will. And then obviously there is one necessity which we need to add. But, uh, <laughs> that was not a piece of yeah. paper, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's on the lips of many. Why, Gail? You'd be wrong of me to speak about any, any names. We have, we have fantastic players here. He's, 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 uh, at, at another club. I mean, we could name a lot, you know. Go on. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, every time I try to ask him in press conference as well about names, he's exactly the same. He's very professional, you'll never catch him out. Um, right, one from Max Logel on table 10. Where's Max? There he is, he's over there, it's all on the right hand side. Paul, this is probably one for you first, and we'll get Nathan's view on it next. Um, do you guys want to change the way that Stoke play, and if so, what direction do you want to take this club in? I spoke to you before the dinner about this, and you said it reminds you a bit of your time at Nottingham Forest, where there was a way of playing, a way of keeping possession, uh, progressive football, and you feel that's maybe the way this is, this club's going. Well, we, we've uh, tried to uh, change to uh, uh, a diamond, and that's what we're trying to embark upon with with the second uh, option further down the line if, if it's necessary, but the principles stay the same. We've got to keep that ball, we've got to play attractive football, try and score goals, and more importantly, we've got to win matches. But 
the way we play is important to us, in, and now I think it's important to the players. I think they've they're buying into this uh, this way. It's uh, at its best. It's very attractive, and uh, but it's disciplined. And uh, and the best thing, as I said earlier, about our signings coming in prior to pre-season is that from minute one we uh, will be able to deliver the message, and they took it on board. And the you know when it works. When, you know, through practice and discipline and structure, you know, it'll be uh, irresistible. Um, that deserves a round of applause, doesn't it? Successful football as well. Is there a Nathan Jones way of playing, or do you adapt your style to the players you've got? We have a philosophy of how we're going to do stuff, and that's not a system. That's how we do it, how we act, how we train, how we how we play, and so on. But look, we want to play first of all, winning football. That's the main thing. We're attacking football, attractive football, all those things come in order. But we we have a structure of how we do stuff in and out of possession. We work on it religiously, and the players are sure we can go with that. Um, Everyone knows the jobs, roles, and responsibilities within the team, and then we ask them to express themselves a little bit. So, it's um, if, if I was a player, I'd, I'd, I'd want to play that way, and that's what comes out in, in basically my management style. But I wouldn't say it's a Nathan Jones way of playing. It's a lot of people want to play that way. It's just how you can implement it. But we've got good players that I'm, I'm convinced can play that way. Um, a question from uh, Paula Scotland on table twenty-five. That's at the back again, they've been busy over there with the pens. Um, this is a quick fire one for both of you. If you could sign anyone in the world, who would it be and why? Lionel Messi is the best one in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Ronaldo? <laughs> go on, we could start a debate there. Ronaldo or Messi, couldn't we? To be fair, you'd probably go back and sign Stanley Matthews again, wouldn't you? Yeah. 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 Tell your story, son. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this, could be, this could be good. Sitting for the right, folks. I looked over there and saw Nick Powell go on. No. <laughs> when, when you were at Liverpool, did you ever think you'd be there? No. I never thought I'd be there. Um, but I thought I'd be in Liverpool. Yeah. 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 So I went home and asked my dad, I said, what was he like? And my dad had played against him and all that stuff. And he said, he was unbelievable. But you're nothing like him. <laughs> it was a shorter story than we used to, Paul. Right, here we go. This is um, from Andy Book, again on table 25. They've been busy yet, haven't they? He's over there. Um, <coughs> With the team you've assembled this year, do you think you've got the quality in at least four or five of the players that if you get promoted into the Premier League, these guys are good enough to be part of your team when you're in the Premier League? Did you say four or five? Well, exactly. I, I thought it was harsh. Well, I, 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 they, yeah, I, I, Andy I, Butt over there, take yeah. 25. There he is, he's waving. Yeah. I'm sure you've got to far more than four or five, you know, and... Uh, <coughs> One thing we do when we recruit, we don't want to be recruiting massive amounts every window. So anyone we sign, we believe that we can improve and take forward. So that's the thing about, about recruitment. I think if you just recruit for just one level or for one specific thing, then you're going to be doing that constantly. So um, no, we, we believe that we've got a real good blend um, of youth experience, of ones that need developing, ones who are who are there. And, uh, and then obviously look, there's a lot of players here who, who played in the Premier League with Stoke. So, uh, no, we believe we've, we, we'll, God willing, we get there and we'll be fine. Uh, this is a good one for, for Paul, I think, again. <laughs> Luke Smith, table 23. There you go, they're all at the back. They're staying well away from you, you notice that. Um, Paul, if you were Prime Minister tomorrow, God help us, um, and you could do one thing, what would it be? I'll line the mood, won't you? <laughs> I'm not really a political person, but um, um, I just nearly gave a political answer, and I nearly regretted it. <laughs> I've just been a politician now. Is that it? That's it. That's it. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's about
best I could get for you. Um, right, one, one for Nathan. Um, and this will give us a bit of an insight into maybe how you are behind the scenes, and don't give anything away you don't want to, but um, what are the three key things you do to motivate the team when times are hard? That's from Izzy, again, in the back corner of the table 25. Izzy. Oh, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, I think when if when times are you have bad result or so on, I think you just one you work harder, two you encourage, and three you educate. So you yeah, we work hard in any way, but you try to work that little bit harder. Two you show them any errors we've made and, and so on, and then you encourage them to be better. I think those are the, the three things that, that we do. We, we like to develop, we like to play a certain way, and it's a thinking way. You know, it's not like straight lines and, and everyone go back to front quickly and it's, it's basics. We, we ask people to think and to solve problems and so on, so there's an educated side to it. And, uh, but look, it's, it's a lot of things to win a football match. One, you stick to process. Two, you try to be better and educate, and then I think just encourage and, and give confidence. Do you ever use the hairdryer? Are you that sort of manager? You can be, I think you need, you need that side of it, but I, I, I think these intelligent, we've got intelligent players, so, so sometimes it's, it's needed and sometimes you have to G them up or, or get into them, but I, I think it's showing people and I think, if, as I said, we've got a lot of international, a lot of intelligent players, players have played at a higher level, so I think we just shout at them, I'm not sure everyone responds to that, so I think you need a, need a blend. It's part of that blend game, Paul, to do the shouting. Well, now and again, he, he does. I mean, he, as I said, he, we said he's miserable. He used to be far, far more miserable. I think he's, uh, <laughs> he's far more jovial than he used to be. Look at his face! Right. Here we go. One from Junior on table 15. It's another bit. Of, it's another dream one. I like this one. Uh, if you could sign any ex Stoke player now, who would you sign? Now, be careful. Dennis Smith, Chris Iwalumo, Rory Delap. Ricardo Fuller, I think he's over there as well, aren't you, Rick? Yeah. I'm not sure I'll be able to control him, <laughs> but definitely talent-wise. So I think I think with the four we've got in the room here, I work with Rory every day. So I'll, you know, I'm not going to mention the obvious. Um, he don't like that. And uh, well, <laughs> did you hear that? Rory Delap just said the overhead kick. <laughs> so I said if I could, if I could bring all four of them back, so I'm going to be very. Very pragmatic and diplomatic, yeah, I'm going to say, if I, I'd like to bring all four of them back, it'd be hell of a story. Yeah. There's no contest, Dennis Smith's over there. Yeah. Yeah. ask you Andy Chatterton's question. Where's Andy? Oh, he got his close because you're not going to like this one. And I don't think you'll answer it, but let's give it a go because he, he put which signing, and then he put an arrow in saying which one signing uh, that you've made excites you most this season and why? How many new spaces have we got in the crowd? <laughs> you're a brave man, Andy. Again, I think we have to be a little bit pragmatic, but I'm saying I think they will all add to what we have here. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I can, I can, I can say that. Where's <laughs> Tony on table six? Actually, Sam Clinton still owes me a coffee machine, so I would be quite excited by that one if that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Clinton owes you a coffee machine. 
whole story. Yeah, go on, we've got plenty of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I you can't say that in public and then not tell us. Yeah, yeah. I think there might be some HMRC people in here now. <laughs> then, you, then you open up a can of worms. If you don't tell us, I'm going to ask Sam to come up and tell us. Well, he got sent off for QBR, so we didn't want to really... My first time, I thought, well, I'm going to give him a little bit of a carrot, try and get him on side a little bit, so we weren't going to do a, a full fine. So I said, look, we'll handle it this time. I said, you, what, do you, what do we need for the environment? Now, we've done it before with people who bought spin bikes and stuff like that and things, so that it goes back into the environment. But we got all that stuff, so we didn't need anything. I said, to be honest, I need a coffee machine. <laughs> so I said, have a look, see what you come up with. But as it was, Tony Scholes intervened and killed him. <laughs> <laughs> so you still haven't got the coffee machine? What a Sam. dirty trick. Don't, <laughs> Sam, don't get sent off this season, mate, I tell you. Um, right, this is a good question from Tony on table five, I think that is. It's not Tony Scholes, is it? Oh, he's over there, there we go. Um, in 2019, we lost fewer games than the team uh, in seventh. It was the 22 draws that were the difference. How do we turn those draws into wins? In 1990, 20. Uh, look, I, I, I think we were... We were, we were building something, we were laying foundations then, so sort of and we had a fantastic defensive record. Ironically, we didn't work as hard on defending as we did attacking, but, but it's a fine fluency, you need a little bit of time. Uh, I think we're, we're better structurally now, we'll, uh, we'll have goals and things from different areas and, and, and things, so coupled with, if we can continue that defensive record, then, then look, with, with what we have and the structure we have and how we, we go about uh, sort of preparing for games, hopefully then with the confidence that wins will, will bring, we'll turn those draws into wins and if we did then look, we would have been a good side last year but hopefully we'll be even better one this year. Paul, is that the way you try and build a club and you build a squad, you make them difficult to beat and then you add the firepower that you've added in this summer already and it can, it can turn those draws into wins? Uh, good defensive principles laid down are important to a side that's trying to score a lot of goals. So I think, I think, didn't we say that seven or eight games where you kept a clean sheet on the trot last season, but a lot of those were draws? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a good sign, but we, we want to maintain, retain uh, that sort of uh, meanness, but, uh, you know, popping them in at the other end is, is, is what it's all about. Good stuff. Um, right, this is from the Congleton Stokies on table 21. Yay! Oh, right, okay. uh, Nathan, we believe you reside in Congleton. The Congleton Stokies would like to know when you're dropping in to the Unicorn for a pint. Because <laughs> I actually went to the Unicorn and the the Champions League semi-final. I, I thought, well, I, I was on my own at home, so I thought I'll have a little wander down. And I went in there. Whoa! I feel okay corralling that guy. <laughs> Generally, I think, isn't it? <laughs> so I had a pint in this and Moon walked into town. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The landlord's here, Nathan! Right, um, there's a wider question there um, It was that I'll, I'll follow up on. Um, I know what a big decision it was for you to, lo to leave Luton. Um, and I think when you took the job, and I remember that first press conference, I said to you, was it a tough decision? Because we always ask every manager, is it a tough decision? And to be honest, I didn't think it was. Because no disrespect at all to Luton, you were coming to a huge football club that had just been relegated from the Premier League with huge resources and, and great hopes. But you surprised me a little bit, because you said, look, I, ha I had to really think about it, it was a tough decision. No, I, I didn't so much, it was a tough decision to make it, and maybe a contradiction, I didn't have to think about it. Look, when, when I was off the job, I wanted the job, I knew I did. It's just when you build up, and it was the club was good, the fans were good, but when you build up a, a, a relationship with, with a, a bond with a group of players that give you their life, that work so hard for you and, and give you everything and are minded that was the difficult thing to leave because you know, we had relatively good success at that, at that level. Um, we were building something there. And I, I, I wouldn't have would left if it wasn't for something that was, was considerably bigger and, and, and the same kind of project. So, look, I hope I can get that bond with a group of players here. I hope I can... In, in years' time, I'll be remembered. I would like to say fondly, but I'm, I think I'm here to do now. But, um, but no, look, it was, it was definitely it was, it was a difficult decision, but I knew instantly as soon as I was offered the role, 
that I want to do. So it cannot be a force against the force. It's a big sign of respect, you know, when you're hated by your previous fans. It's because they wanted you to stay. Um, but look, I've looked at the fixtures. Um, it's a leap year. You go to Luton on the 29th of February. <laughs> Is that an omen? I mean, you're going to get some stick, aren't you? But you think it's good enough to, to cope with that? Yeah, you have to be as a manager. I hope you have some security because uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's only one road in, one road out. <laughs> but no, look, no, no seriousness. It was a good time there. But Managers move on, man. Some get remembered, some some don't. And, uh, and as I said, I hope it's, it's a sign of respect that they um, I'm hated. But I have a job here now to do, which I'm very excited about, which I've been you know, uh, sort of throwing myself into from, from the moment I came here. And, uh, and I think we're in a really, really good place. And I said, a chance to thank the board and the owners and things for, for backing me and giving me the opportunity. And look, I, I, I know we won't let them down. That's worth a round of applause as well. Isn't it? <laughs> Um, I mentioned you've been in football a lot for quite a while now. 15 different clubs. And the Coates family hates it when I talk them up because they're some of the most humble people that you'll ever meet. But from the outside, it seems to me that this football club is different in the way it's owned, the way it's run, because of the Coates family. You've, you've worked under a heck of a lot of different owners. You've now experienced this. Do you agree? Are they the best of that you've come across? Well, I, I think I uh, recognised something maybe after a couple of weeks, maybe in the first week, uh, about the club. Uh, everywhere I went, first of all, in it, uh, on the match day, on training day, people were being helpful. People were so polite. Uh, they wanted, it felt that they wanted us to do well and you know I'm just just looking around here today and, and talking to waitresses and with great respect and the waiters and uh, they've all got a smile on their face all very polite and it means an awful lot you know and the, the fact that um, the Coates family are behind it you know I've seen uh, Stoke develop o over a long time played against them in the uh, second division, uh, in the Premiership, uh, and never really got close to it. And I think the minute, certainly, that I walked in here, I realised that it was, it was a little bit special. And, you know, I think it makes us all immensely proud to be, to be a part of it. from Dave Allen on table 16, T16, there he is, he's waving in the middle. Uh, this is a good one, especially because we've got uh, uh, we've got Tom Edwards, we've got Valinda, we've got Tyrese Campbell, Nathan Collins all with us tonight. What's the chances of a few academy players in the first team on a regular basis this coming season? Um, look, if they're good enough, they'll, they'll get an opportunity. And that's what we say, we, we believe there's a pathway here, This well, it's a place now where talent and opportunity meet, and that was... Uh, a phrase we coined from Paul at, uh, at Charlton. Um, but as I said, look, we, we like promoting young players, we like having a freshness about it, and they have to earn the right. You know, it's not, we don't just give debuts, anyone who's had a debut under, under us has, has had to earn it in some way, uh, and that's not just here, that's in other clubs we've been at. And um, Paul has a, has a better track record than, than I do. I mean, I, I, I pride myself on on developing young talent, but Paul's got a better, even better record than I have from, through the years. But if, if players are good enough, then they get opportunities. What we are trying to do here is raise the standards because uh, I felt every time last year when a younger player stepped into our first team squad, they were able to handle it quite quite easily. Now the gap is getting bigger, so now it's a challenge for the academy to keep pace, and we want to go further ahead of them so that we push the club on. Um, but we raise standards all the time, and hopefully the young players will have good enough to get opportunities. It's interesting because we heard from Gareth Owen earlier on, and, and his mission statement, if you like, bringing those academy players through, and, and the pride he feels if, if, if one of the one of the youngsters makes it. Um, you think they're pushing the first team? Do you? You think there's strength in depth in that academy? Yeah, I think there is. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is. I think the first team standards have moved on. The, the first team standards have 100% moved on. You know, I, I saw things last year. We thinking, you know, 
and younger players were coming in and, 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 and it was quite comfortable for them to cope. Now I think it's they're at their limit now, trying to cope without those first two standards and that's getting pushed all the time. And that's what we want, because then that tests those below you and so on and so forth. And you know, we want to create that, that, that environment that's competitive, that goes up against each other. I mean, today was, a, was our physical day, but the competition within the squad and the training, how they go about it, it's wonderful to watch, makes you proud, you know, and that's, that's what we've got. I mean, I've had a bit of a laugh with Danny Bat earlier on when we looked at that video and, and, and it was a pretty hefty charge that he put in there. It wasn't stunts off Danny, I apologise. It wasn't dangerous, mate. But it was physical. Do you encourage that in your training sessions? Is it, is it, is it competitive? We, we encourage a, a real competitive edge, and we do, and the lads are probably sick of me saying this, but there's, if you, can, if you, if you train, if you train, if you, if you train how you play, then you'll be better on Saturday. We say it, we say it, but Venus Williams, it's the Williams sisters. They were number one and two in the world in the thing because they practiced probably in the back garden against each other. So when they come up against everyone else, they were better than them because they played against one and two every day. It was standard. So we want those standards. We want them to, to have a, a difficult or more difficult training sessions than they have in games. Now they can raise their own standards. If we have a fantastic left winger that goes up against a right back and they test each other every day, they both get better. And that's the kind of environment we try to create. Right, I've got to rattle through these, I think we've only got about five minutes left, but um, this is from Richard and Julian on table 23. Cheap seats at the back, thank Cheap you. Cheap seats at the back, there you go, well done guys. Um, now they've been greedy, they've got three questions, so I'm going to, I'm going to spread these out a little bit. Um, and this one could be quite funny for Paul. Uh, Paul, what superpower would you choose? <laughs> We'll come back to you. Um, Nathan, Welsh cakes or oat cakes? Oh. <laughs> to be fair, that nation's been snubbing me for 27 years. No offence, Joe. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's go for an oat cake. Yay! If I, if I could remember what the question was, I, I, um, I'd like to be invisible. <laughs> you want to live my life? <laughs> right, okay, one from uh, Stan Beard on table one. Stan? Where are we? Table one? I'm not sure. There he is, the scribe. Right. Um, have you identified who's going to be taking your penalties? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, this is a tough one, so I'll save it till late. Uh, Paul Fergo on table 20. There he is over there. Um, what is the board's expectation for this season? Have they communicated? And what happens if you don't hit that target? As I say, that is Paul, known as Fergo, on table 20. He's just over there. What do you think of that? <laughs> That's true, didn't it? I'm sure the board shares our expectations. There's nothing that we don't want to achieve that the board will. Good man. Uh, Paul, if you could introduce one rule into football to improve the game, what would it be? That's from Dave on table 15. No penalties. <laughs> Let me take you back to that, that expectation question. <laughs> because, because look, on a serious note, um, this club has parachute payments from dropping out of the Premier League, and after this season they take a big hit. Does that add the pressure for you and the players to try and do it this season? Like it, it, for a, for, from a financial point of view, it might, but it, 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 I have no more pressure than I put on myself, so, so no, not for me. My expectations would be the same if we we didn't have parachute payments or there wasn't anything, there wasn't financial fair play or anything like that. Not the, the, the pressure for, for me is, is to, to achieve something, is to do the best we can and, and we set our own standards. So there it, it, it might be pressure, there might be pressure in, in around the club, but I don't feel any more pressure than what I would put on myself. Um, last couple of questions, because um, so we've really got to let the guys go, because otherwise uh, you're going to kill me because the players are, should be heading off soon. Um, 
How have you found the area? The area. We know you now live in Congleton. If anybody wants to seek you out, well. um, how are you settling in? How is how have you been welcomed into the into the North Staffordshire community? It's, it's to be fair, it's, it's a lot of parallels where I grew up. You know, it's, uh, I grew up in a mining community, very working class, good people, fundamentally good people, friendly people, people that wanted you to do well, open people, and that's exactly what Stokies are. And uh, uh, I'm a little bit unfamiliar with them, call them Stokies. Um, but it is, it's, it's, it's a wonderful community. As I said it's a working class community, it's a proud community. It's, it's had to work hard, had some tough times, you know, with, with, with lots of things, but it, it has an identity and that's, that's where I grew, I, I grew up in. And obviously I've moved so sort of slightly, slightly north, that's basically not for me, but it's closer to the uh, Trafford Centre for the Misses. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, look, I, I love living here, I love coming here, the, the, the people around the club, the people, the fans, I, I think it's such a good area, sort of working class area, friendly area, down to earth area, and, uh, and I can relate to that. Uh, Paul. <laughs> I'm going to call you now for the final word for the manager if that's okay. Um, but what would your message to the supporters be for this season coming forward? <laughs> well, uh, su supporting is is not easy, and uh, we we are always striving to to please. Uh, as footballers, as, as management and coaches, and we're going to try and deliver uh, a quality product. And sometimes we need a bit of patience, but all we want, all we really want, is our supporters to be happy, to enjoy what they see. And we, when we say that, you know, we also know it's about winning football matches. So I'm looking forward to such a a noise that's still, I've heard all about it and I really want to see it and you know we have a responsibility to deliver that. And Nathan you said exactly the same in that video we saw from you I think it was the one quote that, that struck me which is why I'm, I've saved it till last uh, you said you want to produce a, a team a squad of which this area this football club the supporters and beyond can be proud of Do you, that's, a, that's a mission statement from you isn't it do you believe you've got that now yeah I think First of all, obviously, the, the beyond end will be winning football matches, but there's a way of doing it. And I think as long as fans see players, one, working hard, two, they can relate to. So they see a bit of humility about, about the, and an honesty and a hard work. If fans see that, then they'll, that's a start. If they then see your structure and the way you play, and you're trying to play in the right way, and, and, and you're trying to score, for score goals, and there's a real commitment about it, they'll get behind you even more. If you then convert that into clean sheets and goals and winning football matches, then they'll follow you everywhere. And if you then can show them that you care as much as them, which we do, then they'll die for you. And that's what makes a great, great football club. And we believe that we are one step at the minute from, from restoring that. And it's a great football club in terms of buildings, in terms of bricks and mortar, and training pitches, great owners real good tradition about it, of, of good football players, of excellent football players. There's a noise, there's an identity with it in terms of the lilac, everything, the wind from the corner, every little thing makes Stoke great. And we want to put a team out there that they, yeah, they can be proud of, that they can relate to, they can get behind, and hopefully God will enjoy it to the Premier 